Well, hello again. We're back again. I guess I should have, when I was doing this uh, last video, I should have called it Part 1 because it turns out that this had a couple other issues. Um, one thing I do want to point out is seleniums, no seleniums. They're gone. It does have diodes in it now. Uh, one of the once I fixed the little problem with the uh, terminal strip, I still had a few problems going on. Uh, mainly, one thing was is the fact that the uh, well the the short light went out, but then it would never come on was one thing but my meter was still reading up not as high uh, but I still had some meter reading to it which was totally unacceptable so I did some more research on it and did some more checking the one problem that I've been run into with this has been the schematic and it's a really poor scan and it's the only one I can find um, but one of the things that kept bothering me was if I come down here close is this little line right here it's got a couple dots there and a little bit of a line a little bit of line and this is the shorts light and uh, one thing I couldn't understand about it was is that supposed to be a complete circuit hook there or was there something there well after doing a little more research through the book on it which is where I printed this stuff off of which was a, a download PDF uh, I came started looking through the parts list and it lists the capacitors well I get to C6 and C6 is nowhere on the schematic now this is out of the same manual. How can I have something in a parts list that isn't on the schematic? Well it turns out that I think what happened since the scan is real bad C6 is supposed to be right here. Now one thing that brought me to the idea that it should be there was another spot part that was in that book dealt with uh, some production changes and, and a few things that they did in later serial numbers. Now this unit, its serial number is like uh, 200,000 and something and most of the changes in here goes up through like serial number 6,000. But one of the things that it showed was this little diagram here that was in their uh, in their book that dealt with additional changes as follows. They added this resistor here and this is at 5575 and passed and but here's C6. Well this right here R17 C6 and there's a line going here and stuff that actually represents this little spot here. That's R17 one line, one line. So this has got to be where C6 is. Now, there's no signs of a resistor in here either. Uh, there's some dots and some stuff like that. So what I did was I added C6 in. Which is, and I hope I'm not really making you sick moving around. Which is right here. I put that in there. Now it never looked like it was ever in there. Once I put that in, my it, my shorts light would start working, but sometimes it would want to stay on. Not real bright, rather dim, but nonetheless it would be in there. It would be on just slightly until I added this resistor, which is that R36, which is supposed to be in there for to pick up a heater to grid short. So either way it made the light work perfectly and the light would not stay on like it was doing 
still brought me back to I still had my meter reading some. Now this these these little parts actually dropped the meter down, but still it was showing some movement on the meter. So when I actually what uh, I need to go back just a little bit. When I first got everything else done, this unit there's two chassis that fits in. You got this chassis and this chassis with a cable hooking them together. I had this out. After I got all this done, and with this out of the of its box and this cable not plugged up, I I hooked on here with a temporary power cord and the thing worked just fine so I went through the calibration process everything went just like it's supposed to then I went to put it back in when I plugged this cable in and put it back together the meter was reading again so I thought now okay the only thing I'd done differently was hook this cable up so I took the thing out I pulled it apart I started checking that chassis and see if I could find anything wrong with it couldn't really find anything wrong with it can't even really see any reason why there would be so uh, my further checking was is I simply disconnected this chassis out and just left the cable hooked to this one still the meters reading uh, okay it's got to be something in the cable started doing some checking on it really still wasn't really finding anything so then I got to thinking well what if when I'm plugging the cable in that is stressing this plug just enough that it's causing a, a minute short of some sort it could be in the megomes but it, it's causing it so the first thought was is I take one of these plugs off completely disconnect it from the wiring which I did it's right here and just plug it in and hook up my temporary well when I did that it was showing the meter reading and then I decided well before I actually decide that it's a socket let's try one last little thing I unplugged this taped off my wire ends and plugged this one in nothing everything worked fine so it turns out that there is something wrong with this I really don't see anything other than a little blister right here but when you're using a regular volt ohm meter like this one, now this one, some have just like a couple AA batteries. This one actually runs off of 9 volts, so it does put a little extra punch behind it when it's doing ohm scale. But if you use something like that, that Eichel 950, it puts like, I think it's like 25 or 30 volts across uh, when it's doing resistance checks. When I would check, uh, some of the pins on this especially well one of the corporate pins would be like pin 6 and when I check that pin 6 next to another pin with that I was getting around 2 megs of resistance well that's more than enough to easily cause this bridge circuit to, to move the meter if I go from one end, the furthest points from one end to the other, I have to crank that up and take it up. It'll go up to five, uh, I think it's 500 megs. And I took it up in that scale and it was reading about 150 megs. So there's something fishy with this. It shouldn't read anything, not even on that. Now, if I put this one in there and check it, it won't read nothing. You know, you can take it 500 megs, it don't show up. Uh, but this one is. I, like I say, other than a little bit of blistering at one end there, I really don't see anything else is wrong with it. But the reason why it was given problems 
also was the fact there was enough high voltage on here because there's several of, of the pins that's got 35 volts there's three of them has got over 200 volts on them and that was enough to cause some bridging and some shorting across which would cause the meter to act up now she's working fine and um, what I ended up doing was taking and just soldering these wires onto this one here and leaving this one as a plug. The plugs are there only just for convenience. So I'll probably make another video of this after I get it all back together. Um, I've got cabinet work that i got to do to it. Um, some hinges to fix on it and stuff. But uh, make a video of just testing some uh, tubes or something just to, so you can see how it works. But I just wanted to bring that to you. Um, it did come with a full manual, which is kind of nice. I generally never get a manual, an actual manual. Um, came with <laughs> even a sticker was falling around in there where it was originally bought, so that was kind of interesting. And the, some stuff about concealed damage and stuff on shipping. Uh, of course, your tube chart and stuff. These are some of the parts I replaced. Uh, coincidentally, this unit will test seleniums, and these actually are good, surprisingly. Uh, one other little thing that I really kind of like to... Uh, it's a little pet peeve of mine that um, has got me for... has really upset me a lot of times. Um, I get down here to the right place. Um, it talks about a gas sensitive control which is what was causing some of my problems and it talks about after you get it installed and adjusting it it comes up with <laughs> uh, telling you where to hook it uh, to you know pin one and socket nine which nine looks like they just wrote it in uh, or between any which is spelled A-I-I-Y other known grid and then we got this giant E in here and I think there's supposed to be a P there any other grid pin and ground and then of course it goes on about what place to put your switch in and then just P with the giant E again 3 which is supposed to be P43 that's right up here P43 I think I'm yeah I think I'm getting it there um, for a reading of 2000 and so forth. Uh, they, they couldn't even get their company name right. I mean, they misprinted that. It's supposed to be B&K, not E&K manufacturing. So I see this in a lot of the old service manuals and service information and stuff where a lot of typos and weird stuff going on like this. And some, sometimes it's, it takes a while to just decipher what they were trying to write in some of this stuff. Um, I don't know. We just didn't buy. We didn't hire proofreaders. We didn't hire editors. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it just seems kind of weird to me. And throughout the whole thing, there were some other areas in the writing where they made mistakes. I just that's kind of off the subject, but it's just kind of a little thing that I, I get tickled to death when I see this stuff. Anyway. Uh, just wanted to bring that up to you and show you what all I found and so we'll eventually get back to theory and stuff but I kind of figured you know this is one of those things that you know you kind of got to persevere and uh, you know it was a nice troubleshooting proj uh, project uh, I kind of really liked it because of the fact that uh, when you get problems like this it it hones your skills it keeps them in good shape um, you know it, if you go a long period of time of just working on stuff and all you're doing is just restoring it and it works perfectly fine after you replace parts then you know you, you kinda get rusty at troubleshooting so th this was a good project I really liked it so thank you again and thank you for watching and 
and for just supporting me and everything in this. Until next time, thanks.